Hi there and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, would you please like, comment, share, and subscribe. For today's video, I wanted to make some of these cute specimen cards. I thought they were just really, really adorable when I saw them and I really wanted to try to recreate them. But I know that there's several of the junk journal um, people on YouTube who have digital print cards, but for me, I just, I guess I'm just really cheap when it comes to printing with ink and a lot of printing is, it takes a lot of ink and it just really increases the cost. So what I decided to do was go the super cheap way like I normally try to do and I bought this die and I will try to tell you what it is. I think it's just called a card die and I tried just googling like specimen butterfly specimen die so you can do that also and that's what I came up with and it was relatively inexpensive and then of course I decided to actually at first I decided to just take a, a box and see if I could cut it up you can see a little bit of the craft paper piece of that and by the way I have I have ink all over my hands so if you see, it's just my nails are stained, my hands are stained, but that's all right. That's just kind of how things go. But I tried to make this just without any kind of a die cut. So you can actually do that if you have a square punch. It's very easy to do it that way as well. You don't need to get a die cut. And if you're handy with the X-Acto knife, which I am not because I end up cutting my hand, it's just easier for me to get a die cut and do it that way. So I'm going to just run that through my... Um, my big kick over here and just kind of go through the steps of how I made these and make one with you. So the first thing I did was I grabbed a big manila folder and it doesn't matter how big your manila folder is. This one just happens to be like a, I don't know, nine by 17 or yeah, it's like a ledger size. And um, so it's larger than a ledger. So you can put the um, nine by or eight by 14 paper in it. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it gives me quite a bit of cardstock. And what I do is I try to do like a 12 inch piece. It's 12 inches by three and a, and a quarter. So like uh, really what I did was instead of measuring and I get two, two uh, almost two of these card sizes out of it. What I was trying to do is just really kind of set my die die cut on top of the paper to see what I could come up with. So um, to use these, if you have a big kick or even, um, I think this would, I don't know if it'll work on a side kick, I'd have to see, but I use my Sizzix big kick and you're gonna have to just kind of bear with me on how I use it because my camera's set so that it's kind of lower, but let me, let me see. Let me just at least walk you through the sandwich piece of it. So you get the multi-purpose platform. You're gonna put your, um, one of your boards on top, and then you, it, you know, you can just kind of follow, follow the design there. Um, you're gonna set your die cut with the cutting edges, and it's usually the parts that are raised up on top like that. And then you can take one or two of these, whatever I do. I'll just put one because we're just gonna do one right now. Um, so it's kind of hard to see it sometimes because I was trying to figure out which way was it was gonna work. So I'm gonna just do it that way. And then you put the sandwich on the top, the other uh, board right on top. So that's, what you're gonna do. And then you're just gonna run it through the machine towards you. Mine's very squeaky. Ooh, it sounds very frightening and scary. Like it's gonna just crack and break the fiberglass plates, but it's fiberglass plates. It's not gonna break. So um, I kind of messed up when I was ordering this die cut. So I actually, ordered another one because I was, you know, I'm always trying to find the good price. Well, this one, okay, so this just like comes up, you can toss it. 
This part comes out, so it's a really nice size for a tag, so I'm gonna set that aside. This one comes up like film. It's great, so that's another tag. So I like this one, but the only problem is you get, I actually thought that was like flat so that um, it would be, you know, closed up. You can put your specimen in there and be good. But what this does is it actually um, gives you two massive windows that you're gonna now have to deal with. So I was like, oh no, I got the wrong kind. But now I'm going to have two die cuts and, you know, it's still cheaper, maybe kind of, I don't know. All right, I'm not going to worry about that. So that I'm going to set aside. Go away. There we go. Okay, so I'm left with these um, pieces and this actually embosses a little bit of a label on there. Mine doesn't isn't doing a great job embossing, but it is doing a great job cutting, so who cares? Um, so you just get a little, um, thing here so you can fold it a little crease. That's what I was trying to say. Not a little thing. All right. And so what to do when you've got two open windows, that was my dilemma. So the first time that I made one, what I ended up doing, uh oh, did I glue that down? Oh no, it's got glue. Okay. Hold on. I don't want this glue coming out. There I go. Okay, so the first time that I made one, I just kind of put this piece back into that that square. You could tell, see where it's kind of coming up. And I took some um, just washi tape, or actually that was masking tape, because it's the, almost the same exact color, so you can't really quite tell and it's closed up, but you get the really nice um, kind of squares up on top, unless you try to glue them closed, which is not good. Ugh, I'm gonna have to clean this up because I've got ink on my fingers. Anyway, ignore me on that. Um, and then I put some washi tape here, glued some of this. That's where the glue's oozing out of, which I should have thought better about that. But anyway, so it's still looking pretty decent. So that's one way to do um, to do that. The second way that I like even better was to keep it see-through. And I used vellum so that you can see the back of the butterfly. And I thought that turned out really great and I love it. So uh, that is, and, and these are not meant to stay open, but you can. Um, and this one doesn't even have a, a window in it. So it's kind of cool because you just get to see this part. Um, but this one, I actually put a window on it. You can see there's the clear. So I put a clear in that and so I kind of kept it open so you could see that I glued a piece of vellum, glued the butterfly, and then just kind of decoupaged a part of a napkin and then stamped the front and wrote on it. So there's that. So today what I want to do is kind of try to recreate an actual like specimen card, kind of like a slide almost um, to have it look like this where it's clear front and back. So I'm going to take this guy and we won't use my vellum, but let's see, I have some more cutouts here. Yeah, you can cut them out like a few at a time. So as I was cleaning through my stuff, what I found were these old overhead slides. You can actually see where the overhead writing was there which is kind of cool also um so i cut out some pieces of that look at that i just think that'll that'll look really neat in another junk journal but what you can do is you know we get items like from the dollar tree or um other places with just these little um it's got like a stick on area and just this kind of clear plasticky and you can cut out two squares from that so that's what I did you can't even tell like there it is I promise there's a, a square here and then the only problem is that you'll lose them because they're just really see-through so I don't know where the other one went ah there it is okay so you cut out two of of these guys and then we're gonna put them on I'm gonna just set them right here and then I have some more vellum for some other slides. The next thing you're going to need is some 
die cuts. And so I have some very pretty butterfly die cuts here. I was just kind of trying to figure out this one I used already. This one was like really, really pretty. I think it's a Tim Holtz. I think it is because it's got a front and back. So I'm gonna use this one. I might have cut it out of something else too. I don't remember. Anyway, it's beautiful and it has a front and a back. So I'm gonna use this one for this. So I have my butterfly already. Another thing that I did was I bought a package of washi butterflies, but the problem is that some of the butterflies you get in there are like this. I suppose that would look okay, but it just kind of throws off the whole vibe. And then some of these are just too big. So if you have that in your, well, I guess it would look okay. So you can just kind of, you're gonna have to play around with it in other words, and just see what fits and what doesn't fit. So you can try all different types of die cuts or uh, butterfly images. Okay, so I'm going to use my handy dandy art glitter glue because it will, it does a great job making plastic stick to paper. So what I did was I cut these out so that they would be a, a nice large size. So I'm gonna apply the glue kind of sparingly around the frame. Whoa, not, not too sparingly, I guess. And take one of these and set it in there. Let's see, where are you? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It's like uh, invisible, working with invisible things. There we go. I'm just kind of smoothing that down. Okay, so there's the first part. See, it's pretty easy when you kind of have the pieces there. Now, this part is a little bit bent. You can't really see. So I'm gonna put the bent part on the bottom and I really cut quite a bit um, for this side, but that doesn't matter. I just, I wanna make sure that it gets covered up. So, put this back in, cause this stuff dries fast. And then just lay this other bit of plastic in there. And again, I just, you can you can use a lot of different things for the plastic. Mostly I use packaging just because it's easy, it's convenient, and you're getting ready to toss it anyway. So why not just save a few pieces of that and utilize it in this? So now I've got two see-through windows. You can see the reflection on both of those. So very cool. And then when I close it, you'll be able to see this side, this side. This has a bit of the folder writing. It doesn't bother me at all. If it bothers you, you know, I could have folded it the other way around. It doesn't, I kind of like the writing. I don't know, I don't mind that at all. So now time for the butterfly. So because it's completely see-through, you're going to need to put a dab of the glue um, in spots that hopefully will not be too noticeable and we'll kind of smooth out. So I'm kind of adding it to the areas that are, are white and just tiny, teeny little dots here. And what I'm also gonna do is center this onto here. Uh, okay, again, you're not actually doing this in a science lab, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but you wanna kinda of try to get it where it's looking fairly decent and not too crummy. And then now you want to, I guess I could've put the glue on the backside, but I've added it to the front because it adds a little bit of white to that. I don't remember, I think it dries fairly clear-ish. I saw some white on there, but I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay, and now it's time to glue all of it together and glue it closed. So I'm gonna add, and I guess in retrospect, it didn't have to all be plastic covered because um, it's better if you glue paper, but 
it's going to be like plastic to plastic. So what have you, it is not going to matter in the long run. Nobody's going to notice except for you. And if they do, then you can just tell them, hey, um, don't judge me. It's my art. So you can just say that. You have permission to do that. Okay. Let me go and grab my stamp and um, distress ink. Let's see, here's this. So um, I just have some of these number stamps, which are kind of cute. And so I'm just gonna add that to my lid because I'm lazy. So I'm gonna just add my see-through stamp. Okay, and that way you can kind of see through the lid also what you're doing a little bit maybe. Um, this one I'm gonna put a little bit lower. Okay, there's my stamp. Whoa, and now I'm gonna just use some distressed ink, distress ink, not distressed, and just bring it in here so that it looks great um, a little bit on the number okay and then um, what's really great is that this die cut has these holes you can actually punch it and put a little keychain or a ribbon or anything else that you're thinking about doing Okay, there is the lightly distressed. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. Okay, and I'll put that away. Oh, and my distress ink was vintage photo, which I don't know, it seems to last me forever and a day. And I'm gonna use my Noodler's Ahab. Oh wait, that has blue ink. No, I'm not, I just lied. Okay, let's see what has, I don't know what my triple tail has in it. Okay, that has black. So I'm gonna use my fountain pen to just write a little bit in there. And what I've been writing is, Okay, so I'm just writing Lepidoptera, which is the scientific name for butterfly. So there's your specimen card with a floating butterfly in the middle of it. And you can see the back of it, which is wonderful. You can decoupage or put some other things around, but it's just a really great addition to a junk journal. And actually, if you make a bunch of them, you know, um, what I did was I actually did several at a time. So you have a couple different frames that are ready to go. You have your butterflies ready to go. It, they, they come together very fast. And this one I just started really from scratch other than I had my bits of cardstock ready to go and my cutout um, window panels. Um, so to speak. So you can bring out your vellum, bring out any plastic pieces, and just start really enjoying the process on making these beautiful specimen cards. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, bye.